Hello and welcome back to Midlife Strife. All right, so today we are headed down to the brand new Frost Museum in downtown Miami. This is a $305 million science museum and it's supposed to be something really special. They hit a couple of overruns and some delays in opening up. They caught a lot of heat, but from what I understand, it was worth the wait. Um, my wife and I ended up purchasing an annual pass for this. We did it before they opened the door, so you got a little bit of a discounted rate. It was $195, and what that included was 15 months for two adults, four kids, and up to two adult guests. So a total of four adults and four kids uh, really good deal. Now I believe that deal is still in place, but instead of getting 15 months, you only get 12. And instead of paying 195, I think it's 215, 215 dollars now. Still a really good deal. They also have a single person membership, annual membership, and two person. I'm going to link all that down below so you have it there. Uh, it's really good when you run the numbers as well because maybe you don't live in the South Florida area or in Miami, and you want to just come for the day. Um, if you do it that way, it's $28 per adult and $20 for the kids from three to 11 years old and under three is free. So if you add up four adults at $28 and four kids at 20 bucks, you know, it's a pretty good deal. So we're gonna head on down there and check it out. They have an aquarium, they have a planetarium, they have an off sea floating lab barge thing that they have there. Uh, these like yellow submarine elevators that move up and down are supposed to be really cool. Sweeping views of downtown Miami and the bay and everything. So I'm excited. We're gonna go check it out and see what we see. Okay, so here we are. Just took the elevator up. There is the Miami skyline. some of the buildings you see here. The location is really great because we're right on the bay. That right over there is the American Airlines Arena where the Miami Heat play right on the water. And if you look back over this way, this is the Adrian Arsh Center where they do operas, ballets, concerts, that kind of thing. There's a people mover right here so you can take the people mover to get here. It's kind of nice. The beach would be straight on back that way east. All right, let's take a look inside. All right. Sebastian, we're about to get in. Some summer camps here, which was anticipated. And these are the tickets. There's those weird yellow submarine umbrella, uh, umbrella, <laughs> elevators we were talking about. And we're headed on in. Okay, so. Sebastian's got some of his friends here with him and they're going to be doing interactive things. Very cool, so it is very interactive with the kids. They have a display over here. Hold on, hold on. Take a quick look around. They did have a display with Neil Armstrong's actual gloves and the helmet they used. Very cool. Just a quick look inside of the space part. They have a module here of what it looks like the space. I guess this is the uh, like a uh, mirror type station or something like that. And this woman is shampooing her hair. There are the two boys enjoying how the astronauts take care of themselves. So it's really cool. They have a lot of interactive things for kids. You can see they can put their hands inside of gloves. Uh, they have what it's like to float. There's a lot of interactive things for kids, so it's really cool. So we'll move along. We'll see what else we find. Want to know how astronauts poop? There you go. <laughs> okay, so this is one of the cafes they have. And you do get a discount with this little doohickey right here. Um, so we're gonna go grab something to eat, get a 10% discount. Be right back. So you can get an idea on the prices they have here. What they have. Um, there is a view, as I said before. There's a part of the Miami skyline. There's the AAA, American Airlines Arena. Port of Miami is down that way. So it is very scenic. It is very hot coming in the summer, at least on the patio portions. 
Um, they got some fruit, they got some healthy choices, peanuts, um, then a whole bunch of drinks. They got cafes, sandwiches. Um, I'm sure this is not the only place to eat, so you can take a quick look at what they got. Kind bars, sodas, yeah. things like that. All right, so this place really is cool because it has, this is more obviously for younger kids. So they have like, you can see where they touch and the floor lights up, more things interactive for younger children. So it is really conducive for all ages. I mean, if you look around over here, you know, they got games for them to play. You know, dancing on the floor. It's just really, really cool. The way they laid it out is awesome. Part of it is like there's breezeways outside as you saw before, you know, and then there's inside air conditioned buildings. But the breezeways tend to have a lot of shade, so that's good. It is humid and hot in the summer, but there are some, uh, there's a lot of shade, a lot of shady areas and a lot of scenic areas for you to sit down and grab something to eat. Or while you're walking from building to building, you know, you have that. So this room is obviously for the younger kids, you know, more hands-on stuff. Very, very cool. So. All right, so we'll move along and see what we see. Okay, so doing some of these mazes and things that they got here, some human body stuff. Uh, I didn't even notice that I looked up from where we were and I noticed the aquarium part. You can see the fish. And the stingray is going by over there. Really cool. So we're gonna head up there in a few minutes. Really, really neat. Again, we're gonna take a look around and we should head up to the aquarium next. the kids on the interactive floor a whole bunch of interactive things for small kids and we're headed on up to the ramp right now where the aquarium is so here we go all right so we just came upstairs and the aquarium is over your head so it's kind of cool some fish there's a shark right there some rays a whole bunch of fish just sprinted around that looks like a dolphin right up there. Some stingrays, very cool. It's directly over your head, so if you're gonna spin this around, you can get an idea of what it is we're talking about. There's more aquarium stuff over there. So I'm gonna give you a different view now. Okay, so this is ground level here, and you can see it kind of moves at an oval angled area here. And it's directly over your head at an angle, like an oval shape, very cool. All right, so we are headed over into the aquarium in that direction. We'll take a look at what's in there. Jellyfish, more jellyfish, even more jellyfish. It's an interactive part here. Kids were talking about this, having fun with this. Sharks come right up to you. Very cool. Sunfish. And we're moving on to the planetarium show. Let's see how that goes. Okay, a little bit of a different angle here of the uh, porthole in the sky, if you will. Kind of cool. Kids running around. There's wheelchair access, obviously. Some couches. If you want to let your kids play around, you can just kind of hang out. Let them run around and look at the fish. And you also have that nice view looking down so if you want to keep an eye on your little ones while your older ones are up here you can kind of stand right here and look one way for the certain kids and look down for the others all right all right we are waiting to get into the planetarium we have tickets to start there's a line we're going to get some seating you can see some of the high rises here really high rises this is just one again Adrian R. Center from a different side. This is a museum park stop for the people mover. Um, so it's a different look. I'm sure there'll be different views. You can see the uh, people mover looking that way. 
um, going off into the distance over there. And east would be that way towards the beach. And the AAA and Port of Miami first and then South Beach right after that. So, okay, we'll take a look inside, we'll go from there. Okay, so a little hard to see. We're in the planetarium. Sitting down here, we got the boys over there. You can see the crowd. And we'll see how it goes. Looking up. Go from there. All right, just came out of the show. A um, couple different things about the movie. Number one, it's a 25 minute runtime. So if you got little ones and they're probably under the age of like five or so, they might not, you know, be too happy about being there that long. If they're five and up, I thought it was awesome. I thought the show was really good. It was, uh, it was one of two shows. Uh, I couldn't get the name on the other one. I'll put that in the link below. This one is narrated by Sigourney Weaver, and it's an uh, asteroid uh, one. The 3D effects are excellent. My, son's, uh, my son and his friends are nine, and those one 13-year-old, they all loved it. 3D was really good. Like I said, it's 25 minutes. Uh, another thing is, if you have tickets for the show, you definitely want to be there about, uh, I would say at least a good 10 minutes early. We got there about three or four minutes before and we were at the end of the line. So you get the seats near the front, even though it's a planetarium and you're looking up, you're kind of like forced to look a little too high up. So you get there in early, you get more in the back row, you get a better seat. But all in all, I thought it was a great show. Uh, narration was good, everything was good. So uh, maybe some real small ones behind us that were like two or three that won't have the attention span. Just something to keep in mind so that they, uh, they don't kind of start getting fidgety and crying and that kind of thing. But all in all, it was a great show, and we're moving on. We'll see what else we see. Okay, a couple of uh, interesting tidbits I just found out and talking to one of the employees over here is the exhibits are rotating all the time. They're traveling exhibits. So when you come, it's not like you're going to see the same thing over and over. A lot of science museums will do that, but the space part that we just saw, I heard, has only been there for a few weeks, and the place has been open for a little over two months. So they cycle them out and they, you know, they said they had like lasers in there and different type of uh, things going on. So uh, where we were with the senses and all those things we saw with vision and all that, that's going to get swapped out too. So in the meantime, I'm going to just give you a quick look down in here. Um, this is looking down at where we're going to eat and you got a view of the skyline over there. So it is kind of nice. Um, I'm going to grab a quick bite now. We ended up getting sidetracked coming over here to look at the senses. So we're going to go grab a bite and then we'll keep on with the tour. Okay, a couple words of advice. Um, don't come on a weekend because this is a weekday and it's pretty busy. Weekends tend to be a lot more full than that. From what I'm being told by the staff, weekends are slammed, especially around near, like wrapping around a long holiday. This is another problem right here. There's only four elevators of which three are working. Part of the problem is that they should be for people who have handicap, who have a handicap issue or people with strollers or something like that or really small kids they gotta carry. 90% of the people are getting in the elevators and they're perfectly fine. So what happens is it's a log jam trying to get in the elevators. And then they wonder why we have a weight problem in this country because no one wants to take the stairs. And if you look at the stairs, ghost town. There's not one person on them. So I'm here with an elderly person and we, he cannot walk and we have to put him in, a, in the wheelchair in the elevators and it's a problem. So you might want to come on a weekday if you have that, a stroller or somebody elderly. You might want to just keep that in mind or come at a time or a time of year maybe. You can inquire as to when the best time is. If I find out, I'll go ahead and link it, uh, link it down below. All right, so we're about to head over to the aquarium and check that out. Okay, so we have aquariums. Yeah. Some seaweed over there. Some more interactive stuff for the kids. And we can take a look over here and see what we got. Does he look a lot bigger? Up there. Up there. Yeah. Oh, go ahead and get in here. No, no, there's just that a curve, curve right that between you guys. Yeah. Some rays. You can see up at the surface right up there. You got another dolphin. Very cool. And we're headed around. Keep looking. Alright, this is yet another one. Much larger. They have like a little dome that the people can go in right there. You see the people walking in there. It's kind of neat. And again, more phones and things like that. Very cool. All right, 
right? So they have interactive stuff you can actually touch, which I will do momentarily. And you can touch hermit crabs. Is the light on? Oh, okay, I'll turn it on. All right. If I point it this way, it's okay? Okay, all right. All right, so we're going into the feathers exhibit. And that is from the aquarium. We're on the third floor. You can see both ways. This is the looking the other way. That's the entrance down there. And we are headed to the feathers to the stars. Okay, so I thought this would have to do with birds. <laughs> but apparently it's about uh, space flight and aeronautics in general. They have a cool interactive thing here where you take a paper airplanes, you make them, and you set it inside that launcher right over there. That box is an actual launcher. You put the bottom part in there and it'll launch your paper airplane, and you can see how far it flies. And it goes along this table here, you can see. The kids can see which ones travel the furthest, which is really interesting. You can also see, you can insert it here and it'll, it'll tell you how aerodynamic it is, which is really cool. So it's all about like aerodynamics and things like that. Really, really neat. Okay. So weird, weird dinosaur looking thing here. And dinosaur, feathered dinosaurs. Interesting. Okay. You can see him here, he is pretty huge. We have the beginnings of flight, or at least the, our interpretation of it. So a lot of interactive stuff, a lot of engines, things like that. So very cool for the kids. Cool. Very cool. Look at that. Oh, there goes one. Okay, so we just came from the elevators over there and you can see that's the American Airlines Arena. We are now on the fourth floor and the view up here is unbelievable. We're gonna get a closer look in a minute. Just getting some catwalks over here. You can see the Port of Miami. That's a cruise ship right there. And they have some things to see here. Uh, this is the science lab we're walking over to, so we're going to go get a closer look. Alright, so they have some interactive stuff here for the kids. Little area, some more interactive things. You can see one of the marinas over there in the distance. The location is actually really, really beautiful. You can see the highway, looking out onto the bay. Oh, my nine-year-old all of a sudden thinks he's four. Water everywhere. And there is the Port of Miami. All the cruise ships are gone, obviously, because they typically leave on a Saturday or a Sunday. Looks like there's only one left. Uh, if you take that causeway right on over there, it takes you right on over to South Beach. That tower right there, a colorful one, is South Point Tower. Okay, and then you move on north. So right past that last building right there, you start getting into the heart of South Beach. Okay, and this is looking the other way. This is the 395 Causeway you're looking at right there. And back over to the Adrian Arch. You can see it right in the upper left-hand corner. So we're gonna move on outside, get a better look at the view. All right, so they have some kind of like atrium thing going on here with animals. We're gonna get a closer look. Looks like there's an atrium here because I see netting. Looks like there's birds or something in here. So get a better look at the view. Got some alligators. Some alligators here. Displays. You can see them. And just get a really nice view over here. So this is on the balcony looking out. Now what is, uh, the marina, there's the other end of 395 right there where it dumps you onto beach, you run right alongside the port of Miami. 
solar panels. That's nice to see that they're pretty green. And again, the AAA and looking down south to the Miami skyline and the condos. So really nice. We're gonna get a better look at some of this interactive equipment in a minute. You guys can get a better feel for it. Again, you can touch the stingrays here. It's cool, I just touched one, but they don't want to come around or they come around really deep like this guy here. So to put it in your arm all the way into your armpit. Here comes some more. Hopefully we can get a touch on this guy here. They're really slimy if you've never touched one before. There you go. Cool. There's another one right there. Anyway, let's move on to more exhibits. This way. Ah, you just missed it. More fish. Oh, this is the bottom part of the exhibit we saw earlier. Or the top part, I should say. We were all the way down there looking underground under the uh, glass. So it lets you see the top portion now, which is interesting. There's some bird. We're going to go inside the aviary now. All right, so we're inside the aviary here, and you got some ibis over there. Uh, looks like some other birds right over there, just relaxing. One in the tree. I think this is an anhinga, the water birds that swim under and fish. Let me see how close I can get to him. Within two and a half feet of this bird right now, a whole bunch of fish down here. So. Interesting, they did a really good job putting this up on top. It's only one more level above, and I believe that's just conferences and meeting rooms and stuff like that. More birds over here, looks like sandpipers, another ibis. All right, let's take another look around. All right, so this is, for lack of a better term, the shark pit. And you can see what they got in here. It's hard to see. That is a big dolphin right there. That thing looks like it's at least four, four to five feet long. It's kind of difficult. You can see the, the ring at the very bottom is where we were at the very bottom looking up at the aquarium earlier, right before the jellyfish. And there is the bubble where my son was and I tucked inside. Um, so these are where all the aquarium parts meet. We're looking at the surface part here. So. It's kind of hard to see with a black bottom, but there are sharks and rays and stuff like that in here too. So, and there is my son and his friend way over there, the other side. And again, the AAA is right behind there in Miami skyline. Really, really beautiful job here. Okay, the thing I forgot to mention was the restaurant and the food. There was that one restaurant where you can kind of buy like wraps, very simple food. Uh, don't know how that was. We didn't want to wait there because it was too long a line. Um, there was another like hot dog stand with these gourmet hot dogs that were actually pretty decent considering what there was and there was another lunch truck uh, down there and they had Mexican food uh, it was really hot and there was no shade down there so we didn't go there the reason we have those three options is because the restaurant itself is not open yet they have like a big restaurant it wasn't open I guess I don't know two months and they're not ready to go it didn't seem like they were um, they were ill-equipped to handle the amount of people let's put it that way so um, just something to keep in mind, especially if you come on a weekend, which I understand is twice as busy as it is now. It's not too bad today. It is a weekday. There were some small camps here today, but um, I would say if you're coming on a weekend and that restaurant's not open, maybe call ahead. Just know, you know, go there either early or go very late, like after lunch, because it was packed uh, to find somewhere to eat. Or you can bring in food. They do allow you to bring in like sandwiches and stuff like that. So that's another tip you might want to keep in mind. Um, bring your drinks and stuff like that because obviously it's going to be a little pricey. Food wasn't bad, actually. It wasn't too bad. I tasted a little bit of the Mexican from the lunch truck. I mean, it is what it is. You're in a uh, you know, tourist attraction, so it's not like you're in a gourmet restaurant or whatever, but it actually wasn't too bad. So let's keep taking a look around. I'll get back to you in a minute. Okay, one other thing I forgot to mention, this right here, which you're looking at is the Perez Museum. We went to it, uh, I don't even know, maybe close to a year ago at this point. It was okay. Um, it wasn't too impressive. It wasn't bad. It was just average at best. And they connect right here. So, you know, you just walk right on over. Obviously, separate, separate price, separate admission, all that kind of thing. If you look over in the distance right over there, there's a children's museum. I believe that's it right there. And if you look right there, that is... Um, 
uh, I'll get back to you on the name of that. It's another, um, it's another like small thing with animals and everything. I'll go ahead and post the name down below. For me, it's overpriced and not very good. It's decent. You can blow through the whole thing in two hours, three hours, and it's really overpriced. This is a much better deal um, for what you're getting. It's more interesting and uh, it's much more scenic up here. It's actually breezy and comfortable and shady up here too. All right, so that concludes our tour of the Frost Museum in downtown Miami. You guys should check it out. Overall, I thought it was great. Food, like I said, they're a little ill-equipped to handle the crowds, especially this is a weekday, so on a weekend, uh, maybe bring your own lunch or something like that, or at least snacks. But other than that, I thought it was great, very well laid out. They changed it up, the staff was friendly. And uh, if you're coming for the day, it could be a little pricey, but if you buy the annual pass, I think it's worth it though. So hope to see you guys again soon, and I'll talk to you next week.